Chapter 25 of Tiger Rising by Kate DiCamillo The three of them walked through the woods in silence. Sistine and Rob chewed eight-ball gum, and Willie May smoked a cigarette, and nobody said a word. Lord God, said Willie May, when they came up to the cage. She stared at the pacing animal. Ain't no reason to doubt the fierceness of God when he make something like that, she said. Who was the fool that caged this tiger up? He belongs to Beauchamp, Rob told her. Beauchamp, said Willie May with disgust. She shook her head. One person in the world that don't need to be owning no tiger, and that's Beauchamp. See? said Sistine. It's not right, is it? Just like you told Rob about your bird and how you had to let it go. A bird, said Willie May. That's one thing. Tiger belonging to Beauchamp is another. Tell Rob that he should unlock the cage and let him go, Sistine demanded. I ain't, said Willie May. You got to ask yourself, What's going to happen to this tiger after you let him go? How is he going to live? Rob was flooded with sad relief. Willie May wasn't going to make him do it. He wasn't going to lose the tiger. Panthers live in these woods, Sistine argued. They survive. Used to, said Willie May. Don't know more. Sistine put her hands on her hips. You're not saying what you believe, she accused. You're not talking like a prophetess. That's because I ain't no prophetess, said Willie May. All I am is somebody speaking the truth. And the truth is, there ain't nothing you can do for this tiger except to let it be. It's not right, said Sistine. Right ain't got nothing to do with it, muttered Willie May. Sometimes... Right don't count. I can't wait until my father comes to get me, said Sistine. I kn he knows what's right. He'll set this tiger free. Rob looked at Sistine. Your daddy ain't coming for you, he said softly, shaking his head, amazed at what he suddenly knew to be the truth. My father is coming to get me, Sistine said through tight lips. Nah, said Rob sadly. He ain't. He's a liar. Like your mama said. You're the liar, said Sistine in a dark, cold voice. Her face was so white that it seemed to glow before him. And I hate you, she said to him. Everybody at school hates you too, even the teachers. You are a sissy. I hope I never see you again. She turned and walked away, and Rob stood and considered her words. He felt them on his skin like shards of broken glass. He was afraid to move. He was afraid of how deep they might go inside him. She don't mean it, said Willie May. She don't mean none of what she say right now. Rob shrugged. He bent and scratched his legs as hard as he could. He scratched and scratched, digging his nails in deep, trying to get to the bottom of the itch that was always there. Stop it, Willie May told him. Rob looked up at her. Let me tell you something, she said. I would love to see this tiger rise on up out of this cage. Yes, uh-huh. I would like to see him rise on up and attack Bochamp. Serve him right for keeping a wild animal locked up putting you in the middle of this, giving you the keys to this cage. Come on. She grabbed hold of Rob's hand. Let's get on up out of here. As they walked back to the Kentucky Star, Rob thought about what Willie May had said about the tiger rising on up. It reminded him of what she had said about his sadness needing to rise up. And when he thought about the two things together, the tiger and his sadness, the truth circled over and above him and then came and landed lightly on his shoulder. He knew what he had to do.